Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Barb Hemi. I'm one of the financial consultants here at Code of Bears, and today we're going to just touch on accounts receivable credit memos. There are several different kinds of credit memos that you can do in Epicor. What I'm going to be showing you today is Kinetic version 2024.1. Most of the other versions can do all of these same credit memo functions, uh, but you might find some differences as you go into previous versions. So when we talk about credit memos, uh, there are several. First one is a miscellaneous credit memo. A miscellaneous credit memo can be done for everything, for anything that you choose to do. It will reduce the customer accounts receivable balance and you don't have to reference a sales order or invoice on a miscellaneous credit memo. You can do it, but you don't have to. The second kind of credit memo will be an advanced billing credit memo. This reduces an advanced billing invoice and it removes it from the reference line on a sales order. When we're talking about advanced billing and deposit billing, we need to make sure that several things are happening with the advanced billing. So we need to make sure that the final invoice hasn't been cut. Um, if it has, if, it, if the product has been shipped and has been pulled into an invoice batch, you will no longer be able to do an advanced billing credit memo, which, will, which may or may not cause you some issues. The same thing goes for the deposit billing credit memo, which is next. This reduces a deposit billing invoice. It will remove it from the sales order, but deposit billings are not line specific. We've gone over how to do accounts receivable invoices in the past, including advanced billing and deposit billing. So you may want to take a look at some of our previous lunch and learns. The next one uh, is an RMA credit. The RMA credits actually pull in from quality control module and you review and process as other credits. We're not going to go over the quality module today. That will be in a different training, but uh, I will show you how that uh, pulls into an invoicing batch. And then a best kept secret is a cancellation invoice. A cancellation invoice is a credit memo. It directly cancels a posted invoice. It will create a credit memo which includes all the previous invoice lines in detail, which will save you a lot of keying effort. However, you must reopen the packing slips in order to rebill this particular invoice, so it, it or this particular credit. So you be aware of that as we go through. We're going to stay primarily in PowerPoints today, but I do have the live system open if we want to, if anybody has any questions and wants to review it. So the first thing we're going to do is put in an, an accounts receivable group, just like we always do. We can uh, add credit memos to a regular batch. It doesn't, it, it makes no difference to the system what we are going to do. What will make a difference is that we put in our group, uh, hit the circle, I always call it a circle plus, for the new, and you can see there on the screen that we have a new credit memo, a new advanced billing credit memo, and a new deposit billing credit memo. So depending on which kind of credit you want to enter into the system, you would pick one of those uh, three items. So the first one uh, that we're doing today is just a miscellaneous credit memo. You can see that I did in fact pull in a reference invoice. You can do that at any time, or you can just pull in, uh, just enter the main information. In this particular case, I referenced a certain invoice. I did the uh, invoice date. Um, and you can notice at the top of the screen that what shows is the credit memo designation. The sales order was left blank in this place. You can add a sales order even if it's miscellaneous credit memo. Here on credit memos, once we get the credit memo header going, then we want to add a new line to the credit memo. 
And as you can see here, um, we are referencing uh, invoice line one. If we choose to, we're doing a credit memo for $8,100. It's just something I threw in there. The one thing you want to make sure that you do is double check the default GL account number that you want this to go to. And by hitting the get default, it will populate the um, override default account number, which will allow you to change it if you want to change it on the credit memo. This is what the credit memo will actually look like when we do the AR invoice edit list. It'll show you the part number. Uh, if you put one in, it'll show you the quantity and it will show you the extended price. It's best practice to put the quantity in as a minus one. Let it come through that way instead of putting minus 8100 in the unit price. So an advanced bill credit memo looks exactly the same way. The difference is, is that in this particular play, case, we actually decided to do the advanced bill credit. It's still going to show credit memo here. The only way that you're going to be able to tell that it's an advanced bill is that you are going to see deferred revenue come uh, checked when you select that particular type of invoice. You can also put a reference invoice in here. Notice that our invoice dates are still the same kind of dates that we would expect. You can change those at will. And the invoice type is now showing as advanced billing here in the middle of the screen. A deposit invoice is going to, credit memo, is going to look exactly the same, except that when we pick deposit payment, it'll show up in this particular box here. Notice that deferred revenue is not checked on the right-hand side. The deposit payment will go to a different account than the uh, advance bill will. In this particular case, you can pick a sales order. Deposits uh, will not go down to a sales order line. An advance bill credit memo will go down to a sales order line as you put your um, credit memos in the system. So if you take a look here, I have got the I've got the four different kinds of invoices or credit memos. Uh, they're all marked credit memos, so I can tell that in my batch. I could put a regular invoice in this batch. I could turn around and I could use the uh, three dots at the top of the screen and do get, and you'll notice that I can still get shipments, which is what most of you who are in AR know uh, what that is. I can, um, or I can pull in my RMA and demand credits. The RMA and demand credits are gonna be coming from the quality module, as I said before, and you'll just pull them into the system just like you do the shipments except that when you pull in the RMAs, they will be credit memos, not uh, regular invoices. So in this particular case, you can see that it pulled in a different sequence number for my RMA. It did that because this was created um, in the quality system and at the time that the, the invoice was done in the quality system, it assigned an invoice number. So you may be in a batch and you may be going, well, wait a minute, I added 273, 10274, 75, 76. Why did this one come in at 10200? It has to do with the time that the system was done in the quality control section. You would also expect a sales order to be in the column. Again, that's going to come from the RMA section. So now here's the RMA. Here's how it'll look. And uh, notice that this time it's a miscellaneous type of invoice, but this time we get the RMA number on this credit memo. You notice that it's showing credit memo from the RMA. You can track down the quality issue by having the RMA number on the invoice. This will be necessary also for your customers because they want to match. They would want to match the RMA with uh, their discrepancy reporting in their particular sense. The line amounts are going to pull in already populated 
because again, they're pulling in from an, a sales order and they're returning material. So um, this is a little known secret in uh, Epicor. We can create a cancellation invoice. I discuss that at the beginning of the session. So in this particular case, you're going to go to the three dots and you can create a cancellation invoice. You also can create a correction invoice, but the invoice can't be posted. Um, and we won't go over that today. If you have a test system, I encourage you to create a correction invoice on your own. So I'm creating a cancellation invoice. This invoice has already been posted. It has not been paid. If it's paid, you cannot do the cancellation invoice. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to select the uh, invoice number that I want to cancel. And it's going to literally give me a new invoice, which is going to be a credit memo. And it's going to pull in the lines from that original invoice. Here's what it looks like. Um, notice that the invoice type is miscellaneous. It's still showing as a credit memo. And when you apply this, it'll wipe out the original invoice plus this. So it'll zero everything out. And again, you must go back and you must reopen the packing sh slip and reship it in order to have it pull in, uh, the shipment pull in on a future invoice. So that's basic credit memos. Um, are there any questions that I can answer for you? question from Tony. Do you have the ability to run through making one within Kinetic? I think he wants a demo. Sure. What kind of a demo would you like? And then Tony said just a general credit memo would do for okay. an additional overcharge or a miscellaneous. Sure. Um, just give me a second to log back in here. So the question was asked about showing in the live system how to create a credit memo in Kinetic and in this particular case, I have one already set up. Uh, the credit memo is 10273. That was my first one. So we just did to add a new invoice. And we added this just like we would any other invoice to the system. So we did a, a circle plus new and we added a new invoice. It came out as a miscellaneous credit memo. I was able to reference an invoice uh, number 10250, and then we just complete the credit memo as you can see on the screen. I'll try to add another credit memo live right now. So we want to, again, the group is already set up, and we want to actually add a credit memo to, to this, not a uh, regular invoice. So we're going to check uh, the three box, the three dots here. We're going to select new credit memo and the invoice is not populated because that's the automatic population uh, by the system. Once we save it, we're going to pick something arbitrarily to do a credit memo against. And uh, that particular sales order, we decided to put this credit memo. You don't have to do a sales order uh, in the sales order box. You can do Anything that you, you can just leave it blank, you can reference an invoice number. That gives us our header. We're still going to fill out our invoice date, our apply date, and our shipment date. We don't need to worry on a credit memo about the confirmed date. The terms will come in the same way that they do on invoicing. However, you can change this to uh, one day if you choose to because terms on a credit memo you may consider to be different than you would on the original invoice. You can select a payment method if one is available, or you can just leave it as none selected. The credit memo uh, will st can still be pulled into batches for the receivables. So we'll save this and we'll add a, a credit memo line. And again, we just do the circle plus and we can pick a sales order line or not. We can put in credit for miscellaneous. We don't have to enter a part number if we don't want to. We can put a quantity in here of one and a unit price of 100. 
And these are obviously just arbitrary amounts and we can hit save. So it's gonna force me because I put in a sales order, it's gonna force me to put in the lines. And because it's only got one line, it's got one release attached to it, we'll save it. And we can print the edit list to take a look. Notice while we're waiting for that edit list, that the designation up here at the top shows credit memo. And we'll give it just a second to print the group edit list. Go to the system monitor, find that report. And there's our AR invoice list. Remember, I did this in the current batch. And so we have multiple invoices in here, but this would be the new one. It's showing a quantity of minus 10 and there was nothing in the sales order so it did result in this extended price of zero so we can take a look at how that that populates and then we would just post our uh, post our batch as normal that's all there is to accounts receivable and adding a new credit memo as we discussed you can do the uh, different types of credit memos you can do a advanced billing credit memo, you can do a deposit billing credit memo also in this spot. If you have any other questions, you can feel free to contact us at Coda Bears. All right, everyone, have a good rest of your afternoon, and we'll see you next time. Bye.